Hi guys, today I'm going to be looking at doing a little review of Mission Models paint. Amongst other things, I'll be looking at how they spray, the durability of the paint, and take a look at the coverage. Some of the paint in the Meng Rolls-Royce armoured car were provided by Domino.be, a specialist modelling retailer and wholesaler based in Belgium. Go check them out in the link below. For those of you who've seen some of my videos, you'll know I use Mission Models paint quite a lot. I've had some questions on how they spray, so hopefully this will clear some things up. I'm going to be looking at the primers, the colours, some of the metallics, and the clear coats in this video. These are the paints and the model that were provided kindly for the review. To make the review fairer and broader though, I'm adding some paints from my own personal collection. And if you're interested in what you see on the review, there are some links to suppliers in the description. Before we do any spraying, let's have a look at the bottles. Mission Models paints come in 1 ounce or 30 milliliter bottles. The paint comes in a clear bottle, showing you clearly the colour of the paint that you'll be using. It also has the colour information and some safety information on the back. The paints come with a protective top underneath the screw off flip top cap. The paint also comes with a mixing ball inside as standard. This will help to make mixing the paint a lot easier. Before using the paint, I do recommend you shake it for at least 30 seconds to make sure the paint in the binder is thoroughly mixed. So for the first part of the video, we're going to be looking at the primer. So, let's give the primer a good shake and decant it into the bottle. For these tests, I will be following the official Mission Models FAQ page on their website. I know everybody's paint setup is different, so I may need to tweak these to get the results that I want. As a quick note, the airbrush I'll be using is a Harder and Steamback 0.2 Infinity CR. Using the Mission Models page as a guide, I'm going to be mixing up 20 drops of paint and 2 to 3 drops of thinners. Mission Models say that the primer and the thinner are a two part system and the primer needs the thinner to work, so I've stuck to using these for this test. Once you've added your thinners to the primer, mix it up thoroughly with a clean brush. For the first part of the review, I'm going to be spraying on some sheets of 1.5mm styrene. The primer was sprayed onto a small section of the styrene at about 17 psi. This was built up in some wet coats. The primer sprays nice and smoothly and it's easy to build up a decent opacity. A nice thing is you don't need to worry if you spray too thickly because it does self level very well. After about 10 minutes, I decided to test the durability of the primer. I put some masking tape straight from the roll onto the primer and burnished it down with my finger. When this was lifted up, it didn't bring any of the primer with it. Next up, I used a cocktail stick to scratch the surface to see if any paint would lift. At this point, I'm only scratching lightly to see how the paint reacts to light scuffs and scrapes. If you look carefully you can see the primer has been burnished but the surface hasn't been compromised. When using a lot of pressure with a cocktail stick, as you'd expect, the primer surface was damaged. Overall, I think the primer is pretty resilient you'd have to be doing something seriously wrong to your model to be scratching that hard. I next hit the primer with some 2000 grit sandpaper. The main body of the primer reacted really well. The edges of the primer, where the paint film was thinner, was compromised by the sandpaper. You can see where I exerted a lot more pressure, some of the primer coming away. But again, this was a lot more pressure than I would expect to have to use on a model. Let's skip ahead a little bit 
and test the self-leveling properties on the Rolls-Royce armoured car. This model has some nice refined raised rivet detail that can easily be hidden with a heavy layer of paint. The primer was mixed as per the ratios before and the paint was built up in wet heavy coats. Here you can see I sprayed the primer on pretty thick. Let's see how it levels. As you can see, the primer has settled around the raised details really nicely, even where I sprayed it really thick. Anyway, I'm going to carry on priming the model and see how we get on. And here's the model completely coated in primer. The primer has dried to a nice even finish and settled around the details nicely. For an acrylic primer, I think the result is really nice. It's smooth, level and durable. A nice result that I'm happy with. OK, so let's take a look at the paint. The first test I'm going to be doing is spraying the paint straight out of the bottle. Mission models claim that the paint is airbrush ready but thinners may help the process. Let's see how we get on. For these tests, I'm using Mission Models 031 Russian Dark Green 4BO. For spraying the paint straight out of the bottle, I use the recommended pressure of around 15 PSI. I built up the paint over a few passes. At this viscosity, the paint sprayed fairly well. The overspray was not as bad as I would have expected it to be. I turned the pressure down to around 10 psi to see what would happen. The paint was definitely too thick, although I did get some speckling that might work well on First World War aircraft. Next up, I'm going to be mixing the paint with the recommended amount of Mission Models Thinner. This is 10 drops of paint to 3 to 4 drops of thinner. This was then thoroughly mixed with a clean brush. This was sprayed in the same manner as before, at about 15 to 17 psi. There was less overspray this time, but I did need to build up the paint a little bit more. You can see here I went a little bit too heavy with the paint and created a little run. Perhaps I overthin the paint, or I was too close to the plastic. I went over the paint with a second coat to build up opacity. This dried to a really nice dead flat finish. Here I bumped up the air pressure to around 20 psi. This is my usual spraying pressure for Mission Models paint. The paint was a lot crisper and I found it easier to control. It's important to use very little needle aperture when spraying at this sort of pressure with this viscosity of paint. If you open the needle too much, you will get runs. Using this mixing ratio and 20 psi air pressure, I was able to get some really nice fine lines. The paint sprayed consistently and with very little tip dry. I also tested out some fine mottling with this mix. Next up I'm going to mix up a batch of paint with the polyurethane mixative added. This adds durability and improves the flow of the paint, 
It also makes the paint dry to a slight eggshell finish. Firstly, I mixed up 20 drops of paint and 7 drops of thinner. This was then thoroughly mixed before adding any poly. To this mix, I added 4 drops of poly and mixed it again thoroughly. This mix with the poly included was first sprayed at around 15 psi, the recommended pressure. I think the poly here added to the sprayability of the paint. Overspray was reduced and the paint went down even smoother. The only downside to the adding the poly mixative to the paint is it makes it slightly more transparent, meaning you may need more coats. To build up opacity, I added a second layer after the first layer had dried. Here you can see the slight eggshell finish that the paint has with the poly added. Now I've bumped the pressure back up to 20 psi to see how the paint and poly mix responds to a higher pressure. This is the ratio in air pressure that I usually spray my Mission Models paint. There's almost no overspray and the paint builds up really nicely and really smooth. This mix in pressure is best for me as I do lots of fine freehand camouflage and black basing. That being said, your mileage may vary. You may need to play around with the thinning and the pressure to get the results that you want. I'm now going to have a play with some fine work and see how I get on. Paired with an airbrush with a very fine needle, like a 0.2, you can get some really nice fine lines of mottles. Ok, now we've had a play with the paint, it's time to test the durability. Remember, this paint is painted over Mission Models Primer. First, I'm going to do a scratch test. On the right hand side is the Mission Models paint without the poly mixative. This was all done in the space of an evening so nothing was left overnight to dry. As you can see, the paint without the poly holds up fairly well. Most of the paint was only burnished, and only in one place did I breach the paint to the primer. Here I'm testing the paint mixed with polyurethane. I have to do some pretty serious scratching with the cocktail stick to get it to make any marks. If anything, the cocktail stick was just burnishing the paint. Next up, I'm going to be putting on some tape straight from the roll again. This hasn't been detacked on my skin or on any surface in any way. The tape was burnished down with my finger and then peeled off. Although it was quite sticky at the end, it didn't lift off any paint. Overall, I thought the Mission Models paints was fairly durable, even the sections without the poly mixative added. Not bad. Ok, let's test out the metallics. The Mission Models website says that you don't need a glossy or a black surface to make the metallics work. Here I'm spraying Mission Models Silver, mix 10 drops of paint to 2 drops of thinners at 15 psi. This is being sprayed over the Mission Models grey primer and built up in light coats. As this needs to be built up in layers, I've let the first layer dry and now I'm going over with a second one. You can already see the metallic sheen starting to build up. When spraying, you can see the metallic flakes fairly clearly. Don't worry though, these strangely settle down to a nice smooth finish when it's dry. The next metallic colour I'm going to test is Mission Models Gunmetal. This colour, being a darker metallic, needs a few more layers before it builds up to opacity. I've skipped forward a bit to show the final result on the gunmetal. I'm quite impressed with this colour, it really looks the business, 
Next up, I used Mission Models Dur Aluminium to see if I could spray a fine line. I ran the compressor at 20 psi and was able to get a fine line with the metallic paint. I left the metallics to dry for about 15 minutes. I decided to try the tape test straight onto the metallic paints. This was straight off the roll and burnished down. When I peeled the tape off there was no lift. I wanted to see how the Mission Models metallics reacted over a glossy surface. I used a gloss black lacquer and then sprayed Mission Models Dura Aluminium over this. I built this up in light wet coats. Over the black the metallic did need a few more passes to reach full opacity. I think the final result over the gloss black base coat really adds to the shine of the finish. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now it's time to test out the opacity. I've chosen a few colours from the Mission Models range. I'm going to see how they cope covering over a white and a black surface. All these paints have been thinned without poly to the recommended ratios. I'm starting off with RLM04 yellow. Yellow is a notorious colour for coverage. With just a few passes it built up to coverage over the black quite well. Next up was white. The coverage on this was surprisingly good. It built up really well in just a few passes. Next up was British Light Silver Grey. This also covered fairly well but it needed a few more passes to build up to opacity. Next up was British Slate Grey. Mission Models paints seem fairly consistent with their coverage so far. The next colour I used was Red Oxide German World War II. This is an emulation of the Red Oxide primer used in the Second World War. This colour didn't cover quite as well as the rest, but red, like yellow, is quite a tricky pigment to work with. You can see I went over this line quite a few times to build it up. Next up was Russian World War II 4BO. Like the majority of the colours in the range, this covered quite nicely. Next up was Extra Dark Sea Grey RAF. This also covered quite nicely. The consistency of the coverage with Mission Models is second to none. I'm quite impressed with it. Even tricky colours like yellow spray consistently. Right, let's have a quick look at the clear coats. I thinned all clear coats as per the guide, 10 drops of paint and 2 drops of thinner. I started with the Mission Models Gloss Clear Coat. This was then built up in light wet coats at around 15 psi. When it had dried, I masked off the gloss section and used the Semi Gloss Clear. This was built up in the same way as before. Next up was the Mission Models Flat Clear Coat. There have been a few horror stories about the matte coat. It took me a few attempts, but to get a decent matte finish, you have to spray a very light dusty coat and be very patient when you build it up. If you spray it on too heavily or too wet, you won't get a flat finish. So here's the result with the clear coats. The gloss has got a nice luster to it, but it could benefit from more coats or a polish. The semi-gloss is nice, and the matte, although it has a slight sheen, is still fairly flat. Now I'm going to test how the paint reacts to various thinners and setting solutions. On the left hand side of my swatch, I have Mission Models thinned with just their thinner. The bottom section is covered in satin varnish. On the right hand side, the swatch has been mixed with poly 
and on the bottom with satin varnish. The first test is with regular hardware shop white spirit. This doesn't affect the paint in any way. On the side with the poly, again the white spirit doesn't affect anything. Next up is AK Odorless Thinners for enamel products. I find this is a bit hotter than white spirit, but again, it doesn't affect the finish. The same on the poly side, no damage. This is the second time I've ever used this Humbrol decal fix. It adds a shine to the finish, but it doesn't affect the underlying paint. Although it looks like it has, when it dries, it's fine. Next up is Microsol. This is known to be a little bit hotter than some of the other decal setting solutions. Let's see how it goes on. There are some light tide lines on the unvarnished portions of the paint. A light sheen is left on the portion without the poly when it's dried. On the poly and varnish sections, however, this is non-existent. The micro set reacted in the same way as the micro sole. Next up was Mr. Mark Setanio. Although this leaves a milky residue, it doesn't damage the paint underneath. The Mr. Mark Softer Neo works like the Microsol. It only shows a residue on the non-poly mixed plain paint. I dropped on a few drops of Tamiya Extra Thin Cement to see how the paint would hold up. The section with the best results was the paint mixed with just the poly. The same was then done with Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. Next I'm going to brush on some Mission Models Thinner and see what this does to the paint. On the sections without varnish, the paint lifts up almost immediately. The varnish however is very durable and takes the thinner. Even on the section mixed with the poly, the thinner brings the paint up with ease. On the right hand side, I did manage to remove some of the varnish with the thinner. I don't know why this happened on one side and not the other. It may be down to some of the paint layers being thicker or not completely cured. It's time to get a bit more brutal and see how the paint reacts to Mr. Hobby Mr. Leveling Thinners. This is a lacquer product. As expected, it damages the unvarnished paint easily. It has more trouble though, penetrating the varnish. When this had dried, it had self-leveled and probably could be buffed back into a good condition. Overall, I thought the Mission Models paint held up quite well to what I threw at it. Its biggest enemy was its own thinner, which is understandable. And I must admit, its own thinner stripped the paint quicker than the lack of thinners did. So, I think Mission Models is quite a durable paint. What I'm going to do now is put some paint on the Rolls Royce from earlier. Whilst the build runs in the background, I'm going to run over the positives and negatives of Mission Models paint. One of the difficulties of reviewing a paint you use and like is to be as neutral as possible. So hopefully you have found my tests in this video fair and informative. Okay, 
Let's have a look at the positives first. Mission Models paints are non-toxic, which is great in my book. The paint's also durable. Both the paint and the primer are very tough, and they also have an expanding colour range. New colours are being added all the time, and I'd like to say, I'd like to see some First World War aircraft colours. The coverage of the paint is also nice and consistent. With tweaking the thinner and poly ratios, you can get some great effects, making the paint very versatile for effects like subtle shading, tight camouflage patterns, as long as you've got the right needle and nozzle combo, and black basing. Some people may have an issue with mixing in the thinner and the polyurethane mixative. Thinning the paint is easy, and it allows you to control how you spray it, allowing you to mix up a viscosity that you're happy spraying. So with most paints, some practice and experimentation may be useful. Here are some things that I think could be improved on. Firstly, the clear coats. While they're durable and they do a reasonable job, I find the clear coats to be a little temperamental when spraying. I think I need a bit more practice with the clear coats so I can get some more consistent results. The paint pots are mostly fine. However, the primer likes to dry on the rim and can fall into your paint mix causing a clog. So make sure to wipe the bottle clean after you've used it. And that's about it. I hope you found this review helpful. I'd also like to thank Sylvain from domino.be for providing the samples for this review. What do you think about Mission Models paints? Let me know in the comments below. Finally, I'd like to thank everybody for subscribing. I've reached 10k subscribers this month. That's really impressive and I didn't expect the channel to get this far. So thank you. I also want to thank my patrons for helping the channel to keep going. And finally, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, give me a big old thumbs up. I'm now going to leave you with the rest of the painting of the Rolls Royce Armoured Car. I'm James from LPJ Models, thanks for watching.